They know me just so. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so where did you grow up? Okay, I'm Tracy. I'm from Mitchell's Plain, Cape Town, mm -hmm. Rocklands, Mitchell's Plain. I grew up there, um, 38 years old, with my family, my daughter. I have a daughter of six, okay, turning 70 now in a week's time. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but now I'm residing in Pretoria. How did you come to Pretoria? Okay, due to the fact that we sell my rebellious ways in Cape Town. Uh, I used to hang out with the American gangsters. I used to take it as it's nothing. Uh, there was, my brother was stabbed, lost due to um, circumstances. And then after that, uh, we, my parents decided, I was back mm. Oh no, <laughs> oh hell no. Okay, and yeah. So we, where are we now? You were still telling me about Yeah, so, so, okay. Then what happened was, uh, I'm tend to be a person that is very fun going, outgoing, partying, and working, starting drugs at the age of 13 years old. 13 meaning, I matriculated at 16 at Stramford and I in Cape Town. So we, after that, what happened was, I just went, I started working at Protea President in Cape Town. I, I can't speak about the places because I tend to work in. And things has been going very downhill from there. After working in Seapoint, Greenpoint in Cape Town, what happened was my father, the baby daddy, so his father, he's a, a mafia. He's a mafia. So what happened was with Americans and the mafia said, uh, Raw, basically, and I had to go kind of for a while in hiding. That is when I ended up at the Westgate Mall Bush in, in uh, Cape Town. I had to run due to the fact that my daughter was only like two years old and I had to stay there for two to three years just to be in hiding. Even you though, were with your daughter? No, my daughter I left with my mother and my father. Okay. Yeah. My parents are very converted and holy people due to the fact that they passed and passed the recent church. Me being the black sheep, the middle child, the elder brother is staying now, recently now in, Ger in Germany. Okay, they used to do volleyball at that time, so they excelled. My family excelled. My Buta and my Titi, Yedra and Wesley. They played for South Africa volleyball. I was just a black sheep. But they tried to protect me and protect my daughter. I thank God for that. So staying there was not easy, even now coming here from there. So I've got a lot to say to you because I've been through hell and back. And I just want to ask you, Thank you really. when you started using drugs at 13? It was marijuana. Oh, okay, yeah. at that time. At ganja. that time, ganja. Like now, I'm doing, and with that drugs coming, uh, it was drinking, we partied uh, constantly because I'm a bubbly person going out and having fun. I was easily influenced by friends. It happens. It tends to happen because you're having a nice time. Um, my dad would always, um, my parents aren't, I, I still do get a hiding. I'm at this age of 38, I still get a fucking spanking no. because our colored parents, our parents are that my mom is very of the old school. Either Jay's Reg or Jay's Weg. Either you can come right or you go. One or the two. You understand? Mm -hmm. So for me, keeping having a daughter, being at that place, my parents would my, my mom would they would come to me and come check. Even coming here, they still come and come check if I'm okay. You can ask these people the first time they came, they shouted, they couldn't understand. Then I was involved with gangster. His nickname is Gangster. So coming from there, it's been now, I'm 38 and it's been an up-down cycle constantly. I haven't been to a rehab. So me coming here to Pretoria, after my sister passed away last year. Yeah, she passed away and she, they sold the house in Cape Town. So they left me in Cape Town, so I had to, I had to basically man up for myself and my response. Because now it's a different situation from three years old to when my daughter is now 16 and she's mm -hmm. grown. We, 
we actually, for a moment in time in my life, I could say that we had a, a relationship. With your daughter? With my daughter, which made it almost like the, the best six months of my life. We communicated and everything until I started. I, I worked at Wonder Park Paris. I worked there in the mall, and then I started again with Crystal. As you can see, this is my not my. This is my teeth. Mm. That's just basically it. You can put that on camera because I'm trying to keep. Uh, my parents told me you always have to never forget that you're a lady. My daughter, a, she, she does spiritual dancing, she excelled in school, she does soccer, she's at dancer college, all those things. As long as you maintain your respect, your self-respect as a female. In life, things aren't perfect. You have your ups and downs. But I still believe that family, God comes first in my life and in my family. Keep praying. Think about what you sitting back. I would not want I don't want any regrets in life of having to be that mother of sitting, um, you know, setbacks in my, in my daughter's life. But she understands and she knows that I'm a mother. That's, that's, that's where I can say deeply from the heart that that six months is only a, a time. It, it might not be that forever, you know, much, but, okay, but it meant a lot to me. It does mean a lot to me. I still do have the choice because then my mom then came again to the earth, to our nice area, forest. <laughs> and then they came to it, they told me, you still have that choice because they, they constantly, my brother was here this morning, trying to come check, and he said, you can come home whenever you want. Who are your friends when you were growing up? My friends were gangsters, were guys. I do not have female friends. I'm a glass, I'm a draad, I'm a noemer. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm just like a hustler girl, you know what I'm saying? Because you know what? Us poor girls can also look rich and be rich and try to get there rich. That's how you do it. Me, I will buy my cigarettes, sell cigarettes. If I can, I can't. If I can help everybody, anybody, be humble and Oh, we must share food, you must share water, you understand? But that, um, at the end of the day is, I know too many things in those, in the gangster life. I can say bella for you, can say, what's back me, so like your number, you understand? Or you can say, salut. Yeah, it's gaga, meaning I'm here. So yeah, so I can have that. So I'm a Gemini, the 9th of June, just to tell you that. So I can have that facade of being, I'm a little um, best of both worlds, good and bad, yin and yang, mm. all about my own choices. So yeah, your choices. So while you were um, still in Cape Town with the gangs, what was one of the scariest experiences? The most scariest experience is, you just spoke to the person two seconds ago. Um, okay, you know what, I'm gonna be honest with you. The, you can't really, I can't really speak to you about it, meaning a lot of my friends has fallen, they've died, they've passed on, and, and they're still dying. Shootings go like anything, that's why it's a very, it's a very complicated situation where you can't actually say what happened. My friend was burnt, Ashley, yeah, he was burnt. He was first shot ex like um, execution style, and then he was burnt. Do you know what I'm saying? And left the body was left, um, yeah, just there. And then our friend, female friend, told me she was with as well. Then another friend, Anis. You can I, I don't know if you know that the Anwar. He used to rap because he was in Portsmouth prison. I was as well in Portsmouth prison for um, fraud and theft. Meaning. I actually went into my mom name's uh, friend's home, mm -hmm. you Tell know, and then I went to go visit, I went to go looking, hi, where's Auntie Debbie and everything, hi, and then she they weren't there, and then the garage door was open, I went underneath through, open into the house. How old were you at that time? I, at that time I was, I could say about, yeah, I was a big girl, very naughty, about 21, 22, okay. 22 years old. Mm -hmm. 
I catched on and then I spent, I served the sentence of about six months. But what did you do? Yes, I started taking the laptop, small laptop. I went shopping for tackies in the house because they have two kids. And yeah, and I went to go sell it like it was a shopping spree. And yeah, then they picked me up <laughs> the evening after I partied for, you know, money in this game, money comes and goes. Like just for two days, I had nothing. I could went home and then they came and beat me out of my bed. How did they know it was you? Because me, I was the only public. They, 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 I was there. I was like, like it's, I, did, I do things, tend to do things when I'm a mess out of like, like it's nothing. It's not going to hurt nobody. So I took responsibility because they were by my parents, and my parents told me, you better go sort yourself out. Then I wanted to run again, but actually I did run. I ran to King Williamstown. No, but what happened when you were convicted in when Baltimore? I oh, yeah. I said, oh, wow. yeah, that's the first time me being in prison. Mm. That was my first experience in prison. I was there for six months. How, how, how long did you trial for? My trial was like... But it wasn't that hectic, you know, because the insurance first had to pay out, then they gave me the three months. Meaning, first the three months, the insurance had to pay the family out, and then the other three months, they gave me as a sentence. Okay. You understand? Mm. So that's why it took so long. Mm. Okay. Do you understand now? Mm. In Cape Town, our, our system doesn't link, you know what I'm saying? You can catch mm. on there in Anson, in Williamstown, you can catch on in, yeah, we do not have a, a you only have an ID book. You know, life was very fast. Mm. Now that's where uh, I can tell you that for me, life was very fast because I could have had money. Mm -hmm. I could think, I'm a fast thinker. Mm -hmm. I could now make something out of nothing. But my six, as my six month sentence went there through, a lot of people knew me. My nickname is um, Traki, like a truck, because I'm big built, I've got big hands, you can see, with scars, you can see that. And yeah, big feet, size big. And yeah, and because of my broad shoulders, and I can fight. I'm a fighter. But how, 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 how did you feel when you first mm. went in? You were wearing the uniform. The first time that I experienced when going in, you're still intoxicated still of many things. You still, you know, because I actually ran from the cops also to King Williamstown coming back because then they made me wanted. So mm. I, 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 I gave, I basically walked into down. As I'm coming towards my home, and I'm seeing this white um, inspector, who I just know the speed of the car. I speed the car to the dark side, and I, I, I greeted them like I, and, and I'm like, but then they parked, and I'm like, okay, take out your shoelaces, prepare by yourself, because then I didn't want my parents to lie for me, my mom especially. A mother will do anything for a child. Like as in, I would have done, I've done many things, um, there was no excuse for it, but many things I also done for, for my daughter. So that she can excel in a schooling, in a, in a, a schooling, she, she's first in the class, she's very clever, in a soccer, and I sacrificed a lot, but to the grace of God and through the help of my parents, really, just for calming many things, and also really being there. I never got money from my parents. Never, not. My dad would still give me a five rand and see what you can make with it or two rand. Where other um, females or people would get money. Yeah, even this, um, the Sasa money, this government money, I would not get a cent of it. If you want to do your thing, you go do it outside. You're going to stand for your own, you're going to be responsible for your own actions your own wordings. I come with a very good home. Ma'am, I really do come with a good home. It's choices that I've made. But I would rather not uh, bring my family into it because I've been a drug addict for about, I'm now 38, yeah. I was 13 years old, almost all my life. It's been 25 years of me going so up, down. And I know at the end of the day, I won't be able to run anymore. Sometimes, for me, coming here to the bush is my sanctuary. It's for me to calm down, yes, that the outside world cannot see what I'm doing. Yeah, to myself and to my family. And God's 
God sees me, but um, at the end of the day, at least I can t- you must try. I tend to try every day. Um, I, they say I'm very bubbly and talky, talky, yep. I tend to try every day, no matter what. I've gone through. You've got a beautiful personality. Thank you so much, yes. The moment I met you, it felt like I've known you for so long. Oh, yes. I'm very chatty. I do go work. I've worked in, I've been worked many places. That's where my experience comes from. So it's just a drug addiction. That's when I fade out or, yeah. You that, work. Um, I'm that, eh? Ooh, so mockery. I'm not a guy at work, but I would work for a couple of months. I would upsell, I can work, I can communicate with um, many people, and then I just break down into it. So, it's basically me coming here as my, my tent. Um, Silas got it there by F9. F9, then fun. It's got my lighter. Oh, you need a lighter quickly. Yeah, but you can smoke there. Yeah, the light is very high, you must hit it. So, yeah, so I tend to help everybody, even so that with the lighter. And then, if I can help you, I can. If I can't, I can't. But because it's for me, my life here, as, as a, this is kind of my rehab. A different, the cycle back to front. Rehab you go to to get better. Me, I come here to rap to smoke so that I can go again out in the outside world and just be a normal human being with treated right, with respect, treated no, here, you understand? Treated with respect, yeah. nobody's going to be shouting with you. So uh, it's, uh, for me, it's back to front. It, 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 it might not sound like it's making sense. It, it might not sound like it's making sense right now, but this is my rehab, coming to stay in the bush. Remembering that with a little, I can do a lot. Remembering that there are people like us, even normal, I'm a normal human being. We're all normal human mm, beings. True, true. That, but yet, knowing that I can still be humble to come and to come lay on the bed, have something to eat, you understand? Going outside, some people tend to, yeah, we steal. I go shopping as well there by the local, what, what. You tend to steal, you tend to do whatever, but when you come here, you at least hear some sense of family. Like my family left me, still to my own choices. It's still your own choices what you want to do. Like they left me to my own letter B. People won't understand letter B because, because that's a sense of your, your sanity that you can lose. It's like a balance that you have to try to maintain. I have to try to maintain the balance of still, if I go out here, out to the outside world, and then I'm going to be my full flesh person that I have. I would like to show you some pictures there in my bag, yeah, about before and after. Mm-hmm. The, the, way, the way I look when I'm working, the way I look when I'm, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, many, uh, you know? Yeah, like, you know what? Me, I can, I can hustle, I can. <sighs> What did you know, Jose? Oprah. Oprah. Yeah. I, I want to ask about um, Polsmo. It's Polsmo said to be prison. One of, I think Pol- it's, it's said to be Polsmo one of prison. the most dangerous prisons. Yes, in Polsmo Africa. prison. What happened to me in Polsmo prison is, yes, you'd have to. The day that I went into Polsmo prison for my six months, it felt like forever the six months, firstly. But what happened was, one line, females in Portsmouth, we would sleep, it's a double bunk, and then they call it on the brug, meaning you're laying at the bottom. So I chose to lay at the bottom, because you, the, we were about, uh, I was in, in uh, nine, 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 seven, two, yeah, it's like the, 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 the cell, cell block, no, cell number, cell block. And then we were about, yeah, I won't lie to you, about almost 60, 50, to, 50 to 70 females in one room. Meaning you have about, uh, on the one side, about 10 beds, like, but as in double bunk, and people will make their own. There was couples of lesbians, you know, okay. They call him, they call, okay, they, there's one they tried to actually tell me. Um, they call him like... Um, Uncles. No. 
brookies. Meaning, they're wearing pants as brookies. Oh, you okay. understand? Mm. Then their hair's short, they look like guys, I promise mm. you that. You will actually get turned on by a female. <laughs> but you know, I had a brookie also following me. Meaning, also that is also like, it shows that the brookie and the couple is like protection. But I did not do the brookie. I had my choice, you understand? So, because they take you under your wing, they will do everything and for you. You will be able to, you could do your hair, you could wash you, you could, it was like a normal day, but only in your room inside. We also had, like you, you understand, we, the, the one experience that I had with one female was just because I did not want to give her some of my sugar. Sugar is very important. They only give you the morning. Is it sugar, sugar or? No, yeah. it's like sugar, food sugar. Oh. You're dragging there. You're smoking your crystal. It's not as, sugar. No, not pussy. No. But the mere fact is you're dragging. And because I didn't, but eating is very essential there because you only get, in the morning at uh, five o'clock, you'd have to stand up for, because if you want to get, get some hot water to shower, to wash you, you stand up early. That's why in me now, it's still like it, to stand up early. To start the day early. The day start at what, five? At five o'clock. Five o'clock, you, you get your, your, yes. And then. this parade? Yeah. And then, uh, so about three in the afternoon, but you're indoors, three in the afternoon, you get your lunch, you're like, it, it depends on which day, you get burger, a burger like... Was Bosasa still in there? Uh, so, yeah. Was it Bosasa? Bosasa, yeah. I had to no. make nice food. They make nice food, like you get nice food, like, but you don't get burgers and chips, you get burgers, soy burgers, and you know what I'm saying, it won't be the, it will be the artificial because they have to add something for us to um, subside our drug addictions coming, like the start off was very hectic. It was very hectic for me because the only thing I could have done was, I was thinking, I was like, okay, I'm now here. I have to be strong so that I can survive this. As my own doings, I am at fault. And then we had to have that six, that the, the first three months was very hectic because actually the month, first month for me personally, because I'm a smoker. I'm a, I'm a really a smoker. I would smoke like, like now today. So far, I like two grams, a gram. Can we say a gram? And it's not even what time, not even 12 o'clock. I smoke. I can smoke. Did I'm not proud. I lost my teeth, you can see. Mm -hmm. I got uh, false dentures, so it's off fake. So people tend to think, yeah, because I'm on the facade of pretending to be this person, but very broken. And what I can show you is me, I got scars like to my, my legs, like bad. Like because I always, I'm a runner, I'm like fighter. You can see, yeah, dog put me. Yeah. Dog put me on the side, on the side, jumping fence, breaking entry. Yeah, on my hand here, eating, um, you can see, a glass fighting. So on my back, I've been stabbed twice. Oh yeah, this is the person that I fell for you. Yeah, so that I've been through too many things to, to say that Portsmouth was hectic. For that time in there, I would, the first month was the worst, he's going to be pissed. The first month was the worst because then I ended up seeing how people would gorge like green bile out. We, there is a doctor. Um, for me, I had the sleep just nice because then we would get drugs as well coming in. How then would, we you, would squat. Yeah, okay. So from family? When no, it's not about the visit. My family would not visit me, man. You know what you did, so stay there. That's my family. What happened was, um, when we, when I go out on trial. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna be very blatant and open now about it. When you go out to go, come forth, no? It's a comfort to court. Yeah. In the, everywhere, all, everyone's in the, the van, you're going through, yeah, through from Museberg, right through, like, you know, we from Museberg. Now I see any group, I would see our post mouse, the town centre, we just play court. Then you know what happens? Then they would basically, whatever would happen is, is that they would basically, uh, yeah, we as the females, we females. Now, there's a way to get your things. Me, I'm a talkative person. So I would talk to my 
Uh, yeah, I had a connection in the court as well. I can't mention names yeah. about that. But then I would get my cigarettes, I will get my, my drugs. What we would do is we would up it. I would have a pair of sneaks with that boots. I, had, I, I went to us especially to put those boots on so that it's like a pair of boots because there's a zip inside. Now inside the zip, you, because then you can channel your stuff. Mm-hmm. You can add the channel that day or you can up it. They mean up it, meaning you put it up in your vagina. For guys, it's up in the ass. You must put it like that. So you can up it or So I would wear my boots rather. Because tobacco is very expensive. Like you, people give a piece of chicken, two pieces of chicken for tobacco. You understand? So you tell how you make your money. Mm. Bread was very important. Yes, they told me the first time that Bradley's coming tonight. I'm talking the sex, sex, young. Minty with this Bradley. <laughs> like in all the cards. Bradley means you're going to get bread. Mm. You get your egg kit. Like you get your lunch, you get your egg kit. Eight kit is what? Eight slices? Yes. Of bread. Of bread. A day. Yes, so in the yeah. evening. So breakfast is five. Lunch is at um, three. Like three, the afternoon. Mm-hmm. And then the eight kit, no. Lunch is at two, mm-hmm. and in the eight kit you get about seven o'clock side, and mm-hmm. that's the last. That's the only time you eat. Okay. And till that must last you all evening till the next morning at five again. Okay. So people used to tend to hustle their food. For us females, we would hustle, change clothes, clothes, because you must remember you came in only. You do get a uniform, mm-hmm. but so you you need underwear, you need things necessity, especially when your family do not come visit you. So you hustle. I would hustle tobacco, I'd hustle, um, like now as you can see, um, it's, it's only 10 rand. This bag of the cigarettes is 10 rand Outside. in the shop. No, in the shop. But if I come here in the bush, I sell it for 2 rand. Meaning I'm going to make a 10 rand on that. Mm. So it's going to be 20. Oh, you sell a loose for 2 rand. A loose there ah, we go. Okay. Me, but me, I like the special of 150 now and then, you know what I'm saying, so that you can attract. So it's all about sales. You understand? I'm a hustler. What, what's your worst experience in, in the, the worst experience was um, in Polsmo was when this girl. <laughs> I didn't want to, but I didn't want to. She, she snapped a bit because of her father. She killed the father. She basically stabbed the father. And she, it was one punch, one mistake, and one lifetime that she's going to get in prison. And then on top of it, nobody wanted to do, you know, because now she had a lot of anger and a lot of things. And then I tried to, me trying to be helping her and then she hit me. Yeah. The cash is right here between my head and my forehead. What did she hit you with? I was, okay, besides she, she hit me with something as in, okay. This experience here yeah, wasn't with her, but it's a different experience, I'm going to tell you again. Okay? But she hit me in my head. I've got a cash here in my head. Mm-hmm. Because then she pushed by, like, it was, a whole, it was so fast that I couldn't understand because she done something spiteful to push me against the bed bar. You understand? This cash that I have here, yeah, again, I'm full of marks. The cash that I have here yeah, was um, due to a phone. Females in Cape Town, they tend to want to be... Oh, well, that's why I don't like a phone. I don't. My brother sent me a phone. He was smoking. Tried to change the phone. The uh, the merchant, the doctor, the person who's selling, to keep it. Gangs is now very crossing. To keep it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So he, I was eaten with a cricket bat, literally against my head. I went after. I went for, meaning I went over around. She came to my place saying that I owe two hundred there now, but they all smoked with me. I was like, no, I don't. But don't worry, Judy, I will get you at home. So I went around to her. She first came out with a child in her hand. Me, we talking and arguing and things. And then after that, then she bashed and she went to the room. Coming back, I just felt this bang, like, like my... And I just saw everything that was in front of me was like wet. <laughs> and I went like this and I made like I said, and I saw the blood. When I saw the blood, I ran for her. And she ran into a room and she locked herself. So I had like um, seven to eight stitches here on top. So literally, if I have to say it in a pun way or funny way, it was a heat and run. <laughs> yeah. 
I think they also want to see that upside of things, that life must go on, people. Yeah. So true. Mm. And um, did you experience anyone dying in prison? In prison, um, I, I wasn't that long in prison. Oh, okay, but in that six but months, in that that six months in, nobody died. Nobody died. The only hardships that I felt personally is that I'm missing my family, I'm missing the outside world, I'm missing being a free spirit. Uh, I actually got sick there, meaning I laid on the right to the bottom. They call it under the bridge, as I said. So on the floor. On the floor. At the bottom, the double bank, and then, and then at the, the bottom. bottom. Because uh, for me, it's like just as quiet today. Because if you're going to be on top, everybody's in busy, and uh, you know what I'm mm. saying, in your face. So it's out of everybody's way, in sense. But then um, my kidneys, because I've got cold, cold, it's like cold of my, my nira. Mm -hmm. So it affected me so badly um, but uh, that I had, to, I had to leave. Yeah, when I left, yeah, when my sentence that was, it got bad, bad. I thought it was just pain, and I tried to keep keep, keep myself strong, obviously. But then, when you know, once I was released, um, my mom, she was the one who came, which I appreciated. So, yeah, not any mother would do that to come fetch your child out of a prison and still sick by you. Even though she gives beats me, gives me hidings that I can, that should listen, but she came to come fetch me, and then I was uh, for about another two weeks under the drip in the hospital because in the, my kidneys were affected. So any cold, coldness like, and the smoking, I had water on my lungs, so it's, I almost died because of for the smoking, the drugs, the the fighting, the battles, uh, many, I had many chances, God has given me many chances so far. It's, yeah, through, yeah, through the grace of God, I'm so glad that I'm still alive. About a month ago, not long. You went home? No, I, yeah. I haven't seen my daughter since a month ago because I left. As I'm now here, from Cape Town to Pretoria, uh, I broke that link, so I don't know what else is going to happen. Do you know that six months link? I don't know what's going to happen so far. From now on out, if I must leave, even today, tomorrow, or next week, the relationship bond that was there um, it was perfect. It was the best time we could. We walked, we were like sisters, so I don't know what, if I'm going to go out here, what embarrassment I inflicted onto my daughter. That's the whole thing. She does know I'm using. She does know I'm using. She's known I'm using for the 25 years of doing drugs mm. that I'm using. Mm. You understand? She never would shunt me because my parents would always teach her that it's still your mother. She knows I'm using. She must just respect that thought. Now that you're 38, oh. if you were 13 again and given a chance Good change. To, to start over, if what I, would you do differently? What would I do differently? There's so many things I would do differently. I'd actually, you know what, stick to, mm, I could not say, I, I'm going to put this now. What I'd do differently, I would be, yeah, yeah what I'd do differently is to stay Tracy Daisy Daniels. To stay that person, that personality of being so bubbly and being so happy and being, I would make a lot of changes. Don't you think, don't you think being bubbly is, is, is the reason yes, why you got influenced so easily? Because you see a lot of people. It's, no, not really. No, not really. You know what makes it? It's because I'm, I'm a happy person. But then I'm easily influenced. Would you I, say you're a I'm, people pleaser? Yeah, um, yes. And, and um, I'm a weak, I'm very weak. 
I say my sin comes from God and from my family because I would always be, I've got something to back me up and not to back me up. So if what I would do definitely is not to take that first joint. That's it. That, I don't know what will, is going to happen. I'm sure I regret taking the first puff of a joint because they it went just from happy, bubbly, and it went to drugs, to crystal meth, and from there, it's alcohol, the spotting is going out. So I would, I do regret taking that very first drink. That's it. Okay. Okay. This is no cloud on the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one last question. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask: Have you tried to get help in any way? That's why I'm saying that's this. Uh, I, I, you know, um, there's a belief that um, that the people would say at the age of when you go to 40. Mm -hmm. That that is the person my dad is on that. I'm 38 now. I've got a choice now. Mm -hmm. So once I leave here, I've got a choice. I think I should be going to a rehab at least, or trying to. Do you understand? Because now it's became for 25 years a routine in my life. It is normal to be like this. Normal to be broken, the scars, and hiding how hurt I am due to the fact that. I know I'm wrong, losing to certain times my self-respect for people because I fight, I swear, say, or push, like, for, uh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, wow, what is the nicest word now? You curse. Mm. So my mom says, you know what, you must try to break your own curse. You should try to make yourself happy in life. For you, you must put yourself first. Try to put yourself first. Okay, one very last question. When you were growing up, before you were, when you were still in your primary school age, right, what did you want to be? Really? Yeah, what did you want to be when you, like when you were telling yourself that uh, when I grow up, you, yes. I want to be... I wanted to be a teacher, which I did do teaching. I done, not part on teaching, like I would help like at my daughter's school, but when she grew up, that was in grade, okay, standard one, mm -hmm. and it's grade three, you know, mm -hmm. grade three, yeah. yeah. So, but now, as she grew old, like, I didn't go again. I never went, I tried it at least, but I never went there again, because I didn't want to be the embarrassment for my child. So, teaching for me, is, I would want to be a teacher. <laughs> That's You're the a thing. very, very bubbly, funny teacher. Yes, yes, the thing. <laughs> so, Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Thank you.